Hello, carnivore hunters, and thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, Rick and I have a confession to make. Uh, we actually fell off the wagon last week. We did not say stay on carnivore. At least we did not stay strictly on carnivore. Yeah, if you've uh, kept up with some of uh, our other videos we've released in the past week, um, you know that we do an annual uh, ATV riding trip with our family in the fall. We try to catch the fall colors. Um, we were a little bit earlier or early this year, so we, we didn't quite catch it, but we still had a blast. Um, but going into this, we knew it was going to be a planned cheat week. Uh, and that's only because we have eight couples plus one. Um, not all of them are, are on carnivore. In fact, my brother and I are the only ones my, my sister claims to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she is a hundred percent. Yeah. She doesn't need any, she's healthier than the two of us have ever been. But um, our intent was to stay on carnivore as much as possible. And we, but we knew going into this because of what other people brought, we'd be uh, eating some breads and some sweets and some alcohol. Yeah. And, and we did notice some things that we found to personally to be interesting and, uh, we thought we'd share some of those with you so you know what you might expect if you ever slip up on your carnivore journey, uh, you know, whether it's planned or not. Um, so I think I'll just start here with our weight gain. Um, I gained actually almost six pounds, um, just a little bit shy of six pounds. Um, interestingly enough, though, actually within two days of being home, four of those have already fallen off. So uh, that's where I started out. Yeah, I, I gained about six pounds as well. Um, but as of today, I hit a new low. Uh, nice. I, I came in at 204 point something. I, I was 205 at one point. Uh, I'm down to 204 today. Uh, and see, this is, as Rick was saying, this is one of those trips where each couple is responsible for a meal or two. Um, and it's really hard to tell someone else, you know, who's already cooking for eight people as it is. Uh, that they need to make you a pound plus of meat. Um, you know, and honestly, even I, for the first night, um, I've always been kind of responsible for the first night's meal. Um, and traditionally, I make lasagna and garlic bread because it's easy to, you know, pre-make, pack up there, and then just throw it in the oven because nobody really wants to cook after you've spent all day in the car, you know, get to a location. So um, that was that was my contribution to our downfall. Yeah, um, I, but the rest of the time, I, th I think we did pretty well. Um, for breakfast, we, we pretty much stuck to bacon and eggs every day. Uh, one or two days, Doug and I did split a hash brown. Yep. Yeah. The, the little patties you pie that um, we, we each split one a couple of days. Uh, then there's all the snacks that sit out. Um, I'm a sucker for the, the peanut butter stuffed pretzel um i had a few handfuls of those there were some m ms and again of course the alcohol we have a couple of drinks every night yeah yeah and probably the worst thing i had i do have um there's i, I can't even remember what they're called it's kind of like a mounds bar it's a dark chocolate covered coconut thing um you get them at costco uh, it is they are supposed to be low sugar but still again not probably the best thing for you. Um, and although I definitely gained some weight this week, um, I do have to say I did find it pretty easy to not go completely crazy. Uh, for example, I mean, Rick did, he made tacos when I actually made both deer and, and beef tacos for the people that might shy away from deer. Um, and I, I chose the deer taco and personally had no problem. I just got meat, cheese, sour cream, I uh, did put a little bit of avocado on there, but, um, you know, that was pretty much all I did there for, for dinner. So I was able to stick pretty strict with that. Um, on the trail and stuff, I would have some, like, dehydrated fruit and trail mix and that, that sort of thing. Um, but I never actually craved anything. Um, and that's kind of the big difference is I you know, you know, used to just kind of crave all the sweet crap. Um, and frankly, by the end of the week, I was just really looking forward to getting home and having a big steak. Yeah, I, I probably cheated a little more than Doug did. So on taco night, uh, that was my night. Um, 
I, I did have tortillas. Uh, we also had taco shells. I didn't have the taco shells, but I did use tortillas for tacos. Um, something I just thought about, Doug, uh, on taco night, I, I had three pounds of beef and three pounds of deer meat. And some people get funny about eating the veal or, or the wild game. And I was shocked that the deer meat went, it, it was completely gone at the end of the night. And there was probably still two, two and a half pounds of, uh, of beef left. I mean, yeah. we, we left with leftovers. But um, anyways, uh, like I was saying, I, I probably cheated a little more than Doug. I had the tortillas. Um, I had a few handfuls of the, the peanut butter pretzel things I was talking about. I did have some uh, M&Ms. And uh, there was one night uh, when we go out on this trip, we usually, sometimes we ride for 12 hours in a day. And yeah. at the end of the day, nobody wants to cook a meal. So we'll, we'll plan um, one or two nights for leftovers or uh, eating out. And so one particular night, a majority of the group wanted pizza. So we went out for pizza. Um, I had three slices, which, and it was thin crust. So it was easy to only eat three, but even for a thin crust, Typically, I'd eat five or six yeah, free yeah. carnivore, and um, I, I don't know. I, I think, although we cheated, man, I, I think overall we did really well, considering we each gained about six pounds. I thought I was going to gain 10, 10 or 12. Yeah, yeah, I actually, I thought it was going to be a, quite a bit worse, too. And, the you know, the funny thing with my six pounds is I actually have one of those handheld body fat monitors. Um and even though I gained weight when I checked my body fat, it actually showed that I went down in body fat by a percentage point. Now, I, reality, I don't think these things are super accurate, uh, but they still give you an idea. And I think they're consistently inaccurate for most people. Um, so, but by that going down, even though my weight was up, uh, what that told me is that probably a lot of my weight gain was just some of that old inflammation coming back. Yeah. And um, I was able to drop that off, like in the majority of it within about two days and hopefully I'll get, you know, hit, hit a new low myself by the end of the week here. Um, but, you know, hopefully this is something I can lose relatively quickly. And now that I'm back home and, and going full carnivore again, yeah, that, that's the great thing about carnivore is um, it's it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. And, um, you know, we, we had fun, but having all that crap just made us realize we really we really don't need it. I um, At the end of the week when we got home, I didn't feel like I needed the chips and the, all, all the things I used to create, the Cheetos, um, you know, pastries, cook, cookies, and ice cream. I, I just, I don't need that stuff anymore. And it, it was, it was fun cheating, but, it, and, and I didn't really feel a whole lot of guilt about it other than, oh, am I gaining weight? But, um, I, you know, the last couple of days after eating all that junk, I, my stomach did get a little upset. And, um, I, I don't know. I, I just, like we said, you, you just realize you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. And you really, with you don't have to be dogmatic about carnivore. I know there's some, some people out there that are just like, hey, meat and salt and water and that's it. Um, but I don't, you know, this, it, this isn't a religion. Uh, we're not vegans. So we don't, <laughs> you know, this is really, for at least for me uh, and hopefully for you guys as well, it's about just getting adequate nutrition and leading a full, healthy life. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is things are going to happen. You're going to be in groups of people where there won't be carnivore options for you. And so your options are to completely abstain, um, which, you know, if it's a one night out or something, it's very easy to do. I've been to parties where you know, I didn't really eat anything because they didn't have anything that I could eat. Um, but when you're, you know, taking an eight, nine day vacation, it gets a little bit harder. Um, you know, and the results are going to come more quickly if you're more strict um, versus, you know, cheating the way we did. 
but you don't necessarily have to stop living your life either. You know, every once in a while, if, if you want to indulge, I think that's fine. Um, you just learn some control by doing this. Well, yeah, I, I, and I think it's easy to abstain because um, you feel more satiated with mm. with the meat and the eggs and the bacon, and you just you don't get hungry as often. Yeah, and, and I will say that I think that was something that we did right. I mean, even though we did have a lot of stuff we shouldn't have had, um, our breakfast was still full, like you said before, of bacon and eggs. Um, and we made sure we brought enough eggs and enough bacon. Yeah. Um, cause it, and that's something the whole family shares in. We all kind of throw all our eggs and bacon into a pool. Uh, and I know my wife and I, we brought enough eggs for like, for just the two of us to have a dozen a day. Yeah. That was kind of the agreement in the beginning was everybody take the amount of bake or the amount of food you think you'll eat. And so, especially with the bacon and eggs. Uh, we did the same thing. We we brought what we thought we would eat, which is four to five eggs a day, um, and that's that's what we ate for breakfast. And then when it came to lunch, it was uh, our lunches were actually uh, deli meat with a piece of cheese rolled up and mm -hmm. without the bread. And that that's how we ate our lunches. Yeah. So, um, and I found that a little odd too, because I'm actually being at home on carnivore. I don't usually eat lunch. Matter of fact, my my bacon and eggs at home is usually about noon. Um, so, but you, you're with a lot of other people that are not on carnivore. They want to stop and eat. Um, so it's almost you know that social interaction of eating something. But we did make better decisions there, and I think getting filled up earlier in the day kind of helped us out a, a lot yeah. with that. Yep, I agree. Yeah, so our, our hunting trip's coming up in a couple of weeks here. It's going to be just me and uh, Doug and our dad. Um, and so I think if we've learned anything from this ATV trip, it was to, uh, it, it's okay to cheat, but not go overboard. And so I say that because our dad is not carnivore and we, we treat our meals the same way hunting as we do uh, our ATV trip where everybody provides a meal. And so we, I think our dad will uh, try to accommodate us the best he can, but he's still going to want to eat what he wants to eat. And, and we're going to have to try to deal with that the best we can. But I guarantee you, we're not going to cheat as bad as we did on this ATV trip where I'm sure you're going to bring nearly 100% carnivore, I'm going to do the same. And, um, you know, I, 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 and I, and guess what? I think at the end of hunting season, I'm not going to be feel bad the last couple of days like I did with the ATV trip. Right. Right. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to bring you guys some videos. If we, if we, uh, if we get a good, you know, clean lung shot or something like that, we'll hopefully have some, uh, the you know, heart and liver, prep videos uh, for all you nose to tail folks um, that we would like to we'll share those with you as well if we get the opportunity um, on how to prepare that stuff because uh, it, it's better than you think. Um, yeah. Most people and we prepare it that night. We'll yeah. prepare it that night. That's the way you do it at hunting camp. <laughs> uh, now, again, we're not doctors, but from my experience, if you're just starting out uh, and still have a lot of healing to do, I would, I would recommend staying strict during that time. Um, that's just from my experience, my wife's experience. Um, and from experience. what I've read, yeah, my brother's experience. Um, and even from what I've seen with, you know, like Dr. Barry, I think has mentioned this too. Um, cause, cause I think his wife is more of a keto war. Um, but he says, you know, while you're healing, make sure you stay strict. And that for most people takes that 90 days. Um, some people, get there faster and some people if they have a lot of health issues it can take a lot more time um but once you're feeling healthy uh, the other thing is you just don't crave the crap anymore um and when you do have some it's frankly it's kind of a disappointment it, it doesn't taste as good as you remember and a, a lot of times after you do eat it you just you don't feel right something is off like your, your body does start to reject that stuff um so carnivore is not the 
Um, you know, a lot of people think it's a super restrictive diet. Um, I've actually found it to be very freeing. And even when we kind of go off the rails like we did this week, you know, we bounce back really quick and the weight starts falling off again and you start feeling good pretty quick again. Yeah. I, you know, I just thought about this too. Um, I, I think when you do a cheat like this, like I, I regained my weight loss and then some, not much, but an extra pound. And it's almost like shocking the body because I was plateaued before this trip. And I, I, I think eating the crap kind of shocked my body and tricked my body into, oh, I'm getting the crap again. And now here I am, just the weight's just falling off again. Um, now, now that you mention it, um, I, I've noticed that too. Uh, my wife and I, we did a camping trip, just the two of us, uh, earlier in the summer. And it's same kind of thing. We cheated during that weekend. Um, you know, I'd still eat a lot of bacon and eggs for breakfast, but then, you know, we'd, we'd have some snacks laying out and stuff. And, uh, we did that and we had some drinks, um, and weight went up a little bit. And then afterwards it's really started falling off. Uh, now that being said from, from a health perspective, it's probably not the best way to do it, but, uh, but I do think it can shock your system into, uh, you know, you know, moving things along if you do hit that plateau. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't rely on that. I don't like, <laughs> we're not doctors and that's we're bad doctors. advice to even. <laughs> we're just telling you what's worked for us. Right. Um, anyhow, guys, uh, stay tuned this week. We're going to be releasing some pictures and videos of our ATV trip. Also, we've been invited to uh, talk on Poco Moonshine. Uh, he, he, uh, He's invited us to his podcast. 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 Uh, that's going to be coming up on the 9th of October, I believe. Um, so we're looking forward to talking to him and uh, sharing our experiences with him. And I'm sure he'll share his experiences with us. Uh, so like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when these events are coming up. And we will talk to you guys later. Yeah. Have a great one, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a great night.